My name is John Chory. I am the chair of the Howard Finance Committee. Calling this meeting to order, we're in the Don Griffin Conference Room at the Town Hall. It's uh, May, uh, March 29th, 2022 at 6 p.m. I'd like to do a roll call vote for members in attendance. Mark? Here. Dale? Dan? Here. Karen? Here. Dale? Here. Angelo? Here. Mark? Here. And I'm here. That's seven members that, of the seven member board we're here. Okay, uh, any public comments or announcements? Is, is B somebody on the online, Caleb? Uh, somebody with the uh, name B.W. Okay. Uh, B.W., if you wish to speak, uh, just sing out. Uh, any public comment, uh, comments or announcements? Uh, new business? I'd like to uh, discuss and approve the minute meetings for March 22nd, 2022. If we could get a motion for that. I'd like to uh, move that we discuss and approve the meeting minutes from March 22nd. 2022. Okay. Seconded. Uh, Dan? <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, March 2nd. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought, okay. Uh, <coughs> today, uh, the March 22nd meeting, that's where we discussed uh, in pretty much detail the open meeting violation of what was going to be submitted uh, via our town council uh, to the, to the uh, public open meeting department of the, under the Attorney General. Does anyone have any questions on that discussion? Any, any other discussion on the mi minute meetings for that? Okay, hearing no meetings, I'd like to do a vote, roll call vote. Dan? Aye. Or Mark? Aye. Okay, no, names mixed up. Karen? Aye. Dale? Aye. Angelo? Aye. Mark? Aye. Now I'm an aye, that's seven to zero. The meetings have been approved for March 22nd. I'll get those posted tomorrow. Uh, tonight we have uh, a presentation by uh, Mr. Richard Gunderson on he had submitted a private <coughs> petition on the study best used options for the former middle school and possible feasibility of the program. Uh, the private petition for folks in the audience is uh, anybody in the town of Harwich can submit a private petition. All you need is 10 signatures. Uh, and then uh, your warrant has to be submitted to legal counsel to pass their, uh, their approval, which, uh, which Richards did. And he had like five words that the town council basically said it's approved. Uh, after that, it has to be put on the warrant. The selectmen uh, have to put it on the warrant. They cannot deny it. And uh, I've asked Richard to come in and speak to his private petition tonight. And he's uh, he's uh, uh, graciously accepted the offer. I also invited folks that I thought had a contrary uh, opinion to the to this presentation or to the to the cultural center uh, operation. And uh, I have not heard. I've heard back, and there's been conflicts of schedule. So, Richard, if you want to take it away. And okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, and thank you all for giving me this opportunity. Um, I've been told that you've all watched the presentation of this article to the Board of Selectmen last week. Uh, that's good and maybe not so good. I had hoped the petition article would be pretty much self-explanatory, but from several comments I've heard in the past uh, couple of weeks, I'm not so sure. So let me briefly try again for those who might not understand what this is all about and what it's for. It's a two-part study applying independent and professional analysis to conduct a feasibility study to identify and analyze the highest and best uses for the middle school building and land. The four criteria that are typically used to narrow potential uses down are is it legally permissible, physically possible, maximally productive, and financially feasible? Those are the classical criteria that are used. A consultant under this study would be made aware of all prior repurpose committee activities that were done seven or eight years ago. We're not trying to repeat history here. A consultant would develop an understanding of Harwich demographics and culture and using that information as background to identify what has been successful reuses of old similar buildings in other locations around the country that could be considered options for the highest and best use for this property. Each option is to be evaluated pros, cons, and risks. Now this is different than what was done with the town repurpose committees, because I keep hearing comparisons to it, they were important but limited to primarily resident opinions. 
I look at what was done as a ground-up approach for possible uses. This petition study is more of a top-down search for best options using an independent consultant. Public meetings would eventually be conducted for ideas that looked promising. Also, it's been at least eight years since the town repurposed committees were formed, and some things have changed. I think it's worthwhile to apply a portion of the funding for this petition, possibly 25 to 33 percent for this first task. The second one is basically given that there's been a significant investment in time and money already made over the last six years for the cultural center, the old middle school, we need, a prof we need professional advice on what can be done to improve the use as a cultural center. I believe this is something that is important and way overdue. This part of the study will address what is needed to get from where we are now, which is mostly a room rental business, to an organization that is financially viable and with more complete program offerings in arts, performances, and education. The output of this project will be a comprehensive strategic and or business plan, and there are differences, that looks at the demographics, competition, and the economy of this area, recommends the mix and scheduling and pricing of cultural offerings. <coughs> it will include financial plans, capital improvement plans out five to 10 years, as well as marketing, advertising plans, communication media plans, staffing requirements, and organizational options. I go through that detail because there are some people who think this is a trivial pursuit. The amount and source of funding, um, right now I'm not sure whether free cash is available, wasn't available, maybe now it is, maybe it isn't, but the backup is approximately $75,000 from the revolving fund for the Middle School Cultural Center. It's been determined by legal counsel that that is an appropriate use of these funds. I thought it might take just a couple of minutes to address some comments that I've heard recently, because I think it does generate some discussion and gives me a chance to refute some of the comments. One argument against this petition article is that the, it is against the current use of the middle school. In other words, it's not in favor of the middle school, uh, I'm, excuse me, of the cultural center use of the middle school. That's not the case. The cultural center option deserves more attention and help and that is the focus of the full second task. The focus of that activity is to help make the cultural center a success financially and culturally beyond just renting rooms. It would be a useful and important guide for the new director of cultural affairs if that position is approved. I've heard the strategic plans and business plans are not needed. It is a waste of money. Creating such plans is easy. I don't believe that. The scope of activity in that second task is comprehensive. If it was easy or trivial, why wasn't it done six years ago, five years ago, last year? Before we accumulated over $600,000 in deficits trying to create a cultural center at the middle school with no plan other than renting rooms. I've heard that this study is a waste of money. In my opinion, the only waste of money is the money the town loses each year by continuing to do the same thing, expecting a different outcome, without a business plan or a strategic plan for this cultural center. By the way, the annual deficit that we were told averaged about $100,000 annually did not include any charges for the community center director's time and effort. We recently heard from the town administrator what we already knew that the community center director spent about 50% of her time operating the middle school property. Those indirect charges of salary and benefits were not included in the revenue expense data from the finance director. So the more accurate loss to the town has been an average of $170,000 each year. So I ask you and the voters at town meeting, is spending a one-time amount of 75,000 a waste of money if it leads to a better cultural center that is financially self-sustaining. I have heard that we shouldn't sell this property at too low a price or give it away. I agree. This study is not intended to address financial arrangements. 
The only mention of value is with respect to the whole town. That is, what is the value to the whole town if this property is used as option X or option Y? This petition article has been criticized because it suggests that the cultural center be self-sufficient or that it be financially viable. What's wrong with a goal of being financially self-sufficient? I realize that in a city or town, not every service can cover its costs. The community center and library are good examples. But if there is a way for a non-essential service like this cultural center to cover most or all of its expenses, why not do it? Why not try to do it? One key to being financially self-sufficient that needs more investigation and attention is to operate the cultural center as a nonprofit corporation. The Board of Selectmen approved a motion back in June of 2016 that recognized the benefits of having a nonprofit operate the cultural center. The motion in part said a two-year interim use plan of operation, including town use and possible license agreements with nonprofit organizations. Almost all cultural operations on the Cape operate as nonprofits, not municipal departments. Howard's Junior Theater has been viable for over 70 years. The Guild of Howard's Artists have been operating for over 40 years as nonprofits. The biggest benefit is that this type of organization can get revenue from fundraising, which includes sponsorships grants from philanthropic organizations for specific purposes, raffles and donations, all can be used to cover expenses. The better nonprofit cultural centers have positive cash flows many if not every year. Viable nonprofits generate upwards of 50% of their revenue from fundraising. So again I ask, what's wrong with the goal of the cultural center being financially self-sufficient it is possible to gain greater economic benefit to Howitch with this cultural center as a nonprofit and eliminate the drain on taxpayer dollars. Thank you for your time. I'd be happy to answer questions. Uh, thank you, Richard. Uh, entertain uh, questions from the board. Why don't we start with Mark? Sure. Um, $75,000 for the study. Um, how did you come up with that? Or do we have any proposals? Or? Well, <laughs> the... The estimate is based, as I said, like one-third, two-thirds. One-third for the first task, two-thirds two for the second. Um, anything with, three, with six digits, you know, 100,000 and over, would draw a lot of attention. I thought 75,000 might be more reasonable. Plus, at the time we came up with this number, the estimate, we, were, we had estimated about $100,000 a year of losses. So we figured one year of losses, let's see what that adds up to be. And it's about... Uh, I think it's four week, four week, uh, yeah, four week, four labor weeks at $150 an hour and for the first task and roughly eight labor weeks for the second task. Doesn't seem like a lot of time. As a matter of fact, when I did address this question of how much should we spend or how much, how much would it cost to do a good strategic plan, business plan for a cultural center, I talked with a uh, a senior person at a cultural center nearby. And uh, that estimate was in excess of $100,000. You're wasting your time if you don't at least spend $100,000. So it was a compromise. Um, 50 is too low, 100 is too high. A little bit of this, we just grabbed it out of the air. Uh, it may not be enough, uh, but it may be a good start. But are there uh, corporations or people that specialize in this type of, so there are people that you can, yeah. we can bid this out to? Okay. Right, and there is one that ha we had preliminary conversations with that does um, the analysis and, and uh, planning, strategic planning, um, the evaluation of the property for the specific cultural center that they were looking to do, and um, we were close. I think their total for this kind of a tasking was 95000 uh, They also specialize in doing the whole development. If it needs construction, they'll go forward with the construction and changes 
rehab, rehabilitation of the building. But they also realize that some agencies like to get them just to do the upfront work and not be part of the development because there's a potential conflict when you're doing the first and you're bidding on the second. So, but that at least gave us a comfortable feeling that we weren't too far off. But there are, there are companies. I would like to see uh, some universities be involved. Um, plan, business planning, um, particularly with the planning, planning management and planning aspects of it. Um, I don't know what they have. I mean, you can mix universities. Harvard's got a great arts and, arts and cultural and humanities department. Um, other schools have good management schools, entrepreneurial, been known for entrepreneurial classes. So that would be nice only because there's probably more labor hours involved and less goes to overhead. But if we go out with an RFP and you sort of pick from what you got. Okay. Any more, Mark? Or That's it. Dan? <coughs> yes, I have one question and then a follow up. Nice sure. to meet you, Mr. Gunn. Nice to meet you too. Um, do you envision this consultant getting public input on best uses? Um, I guess I would go have them do their independent professional analysis and identification and then go for the, pu for the, for the public re rebate or the public uh, comment. Um, it, yeah, yeah, I lived through the first two and um, I just think an independent viewpoint would be useful, but you've got to go back to the community to have them say what they want. Yeah, we would not bypass that option. A follow-up question. Yeah. Let's say you're successful, goes to town meeting, and it passes. A consultant comes in, he or she does their study, and a report is pro uh, produced. What do you envision happening going from there? Well, there's probably a number of options. If there is a full-time person on staff, I think that the, I've heard, and I haven't seen it confirmed, but that that person would work with this consultant during the time of execution of this activity. So it would be an education and, uh, and a coordination with the town, town, town full-time person. Um, I foresee that this should be a guide for the town to put a limit on the amount of time they spend organizing this as a municipal operation and put a termination point to when they begin striving to get a, in, a nonprofit organization to take it over. That takes a lot of community development. It takes vision. It takes one or more people to get together and figure out what they want. Um, I don't know if this community yet has that vision. When I talk to or look, not at many, but some other cultural art, art centers around the Cape, there has been a small group or an individual with that vision. So unless that person shows up, it may stay as a municipal operation. But if there is that organization that's available, it's the only way to make it financially self-sustaining. I don't see it being financially viable as a municipal operation. It requires staff, a lot of staff. So your expectation would be that the town would act on the whatever the, the study produced in terms of results. Yep. What happens if it gets shelved? Like, we're not gonna do that. That's a distinct possibility because as you know, the selectmen chose not to, not to endorse this four to one. I'm hoping that they see the light and that there is some benefit that comes out of this if it gets approved. So there is the risk that yes. we could spend 75 grand and you get a report that sits on a shelf. Just like there's a risk we could go on for several more years at $170,000 a year of deficit under the current operation. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Karen? So when I think I was in consulting, IT consulting before I retired, but um, I think there, uh, personally, I think there's huge value in third party uh, driving an assessment, if you will, because I've done several assessments mm -hmm. for companies that were doing projects, considering projects, in trouble with projects, et cetera. Um, 
in order for me to be successful in that role and for this person to be successful, they're gonna need somebody within the town. I'd call them a project manager, but call them whatever you want, a project lead. Mm -hmm. Could come from multiple varying departments. Ideally, it would come from somebody in the admin stream, but um, or department. But how about, how about the town planner? How about the the, the uh, planning committee? Yeah. So I think there's options, but I think that's something that the town will need to consider because, to me, it will only be successful if they have a partner that has the same Absolutely. objectives and. So I think that's a critical component of this. I agree. It's not the 75 grand, it's also the partnership and the commitment mm -hmm. from a person to partner with that consultant, but also um, support from top down that says if this consultant, or when this consultant and this project manager, I'll use that term for now, mm -hmm. reaches out to all the department heads um, or whoever needs to provide input, they need to react. Because it's a fixed, yeah. you know, you were talking four to twelve week project or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I that's a critical component of this. So, when I say that for the benefit of people who never run these sorts of things, but mm -hmm. for this to be successful, it's not just dropping seventy five grand. It's a commitment, an executive level commitment. So, in our case, that's the board of selectmen and town administrator. Um, so that would have to be an absolute commitment um, if this gets approved at annual town meeting. Right. I think that's crucial. And I think one other level of commitment is from the artist community yes. that is going to benefit the most from this, or could yeah. be one of the big benefits. Um, I know the Chamber of Commerce is interested, yeah. uh, but no one seems to want to take the ball and run with it. So they need to be yeah. stimulated to take more of an interest, in my opinion. I agree, 100 percent, like no doubt about it. Mm. You can't, 75 grand is useless without that kind of commitment. Yep. Yep. Um, it will go to waste. That's a risk. Yeah, that's a risk. Um, so that, I mean, that's that's my biggest thing. I'm a, I'm a proponent of getting the analysis done one way or the other. Um, this seems to me to be a good option um, since we don't have anybody I don't think in place to be able to start to drive this thing. The other thing I wanted to comment on was what it, I know we talked in the meeting, that the selectman meeting last week, I think you were at, and um, we talked about the trial period that's sort of in process. It was two years, now it's six years, whatever it ends. I can't remember when it ends. Next year, whatever. Mm. They, I think there's probably some debate it's about still that. A, it's still an issue of dispute right now when it's, when it's supposed to end, but it can end whenever the Board of Selectmen wants it to yeah, end. Yeah, or they can extend it. They right. have that option, yeah. right. um, and we know that. Yeah. So, um, but I guess in the interest of the town, seeing as that, at least the initial, the current plan, um, sort of period, trial period, should come to close within the next year or so, year and a half maybe, I don't know. You got, you're really close. Yeah. I think about a year, year and a half. Yep. And so to me, this would fall probably right at the perfect time to sort of bring us to that end of that trial period um, and come out with a recommendation and then bring mm -hmm. that to the town. Mm -hmm. So understanding, I, it was helpful when you brought raised that trial periods right. at first and then the extension because that helped me wrap my head around it in terms of if we did this, how does this fit in terms of timing? I don't think we should wait till that ends to do it. That makes no sense right. whatsoever, but um, to me anyway. Uh, yeah. We want to be prepared to hit the ground running in whatever way, whatever decision is made at the end of that trial period. Good. I appreciate that you think it made sense to you, but I was hoping it would make sense to the Board of Selectmen. No, too. I know there was discussion and sort of some yeah. debate about that. Regardless, a yeah. trial period uh, is cannot go on indefinitely and still be called right. a trial. I mean, in my opinion. Right. So and, and that was the whole idea of this. It wasn't intended to be a separate effort. It really was intended to be a dovetail with this full-time person or with somebody else in the community or the town who would want to take it on and start to run with it. The person with the vision, with the end goal in mind. You know, when I did a lot of studies for the U.S. government, it was, what is the end state? I don't know what the end state of this building is, except room rentals. And that's great. It covers 50% of their expenses. But what's, what's the real reason for doing it? Yeah. 
and it's been six years trying to figure that out. And not that Carolyn Carey didn't try. I know she's tried a lot of things. But I don't think she had that much outside support. And I don't mean within the town. I mean within the community to really help her that, help her do that. Yeah, it's clear they've made good progress, yeah. you know, over the past six years. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of people who would, I've at least when I was on social media, I've backed off of it since, but <laughs> yeah. when I was on it, there were yeah. a lot of people saying we were against culture, trying to get information about this. And for me, that's not true at all. No. I, I appreciate it, I enjoy it, and I think there's important to every town. So right. that's not the case at all. If this, if we could get this to be a, um, a really, you know, progressive and sort of really great cultural center, yeah. Um, yeah. we're all better off. But we do need to figure out how to pay for it because ultimately the overage has come back to us as taxpayers. So in the other seat, that's we're right. all taxpayers here as well. That's right. No, it has great potential. It works in other communities. I know uh, Falmouth is one. Obviously, Yarmouth is another. There's a lot of them around. They're not directly comparable because some of them are small. Right. Um, we're big. This is a 66,000 square foot space. Um, it's big, and it's. But that may be a benefit, depending on how you structure it. I mean, right now it's room rentals, 40 rooms, which helps pay for 50% of the costs. And they're, they're paying about the same rate that the Yarmouth Cultural Center, which is called the Cape Cod Cultural Center, uh, charges for their rooms, their studios. I think they only have five. But on average, they're smaller, ours are larger, but they're about 300 bucks a month. So I don't think there's a lot of wiggle room to increase the rents. So we, where are we going to get the other 50%? <coughs> We've got to start doing something with the building. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done. That's why I said there needs to be a capital plan capital expenditure plan. I know you can downplay some of those things and say, well, that's, that's easy. We'll just put in the kitchen and it'll work tomorrow or next week or whatever. But I don't know if it's that easy. And I'm, before you make a decision on that, I would wonder how do we use other facilities that are already good right there? Yeah. My last comment on sure. this and Sorry. I'll move on. But the, as a fi put my finance committee hat on, my primary and concern right now is the unknown capital plan for this building right now in 2026 something like 1.6 million place dollar placeholder in the plan right if you look at the list of things that could potentially break need improve need installment yeah that doesn't jive with me so that's all i'll say on that but i think right you guys can talk it costs about fifty five thousand dollars to resurface a basketball court I don't know what the court's condition I've never been in the building. I drive by it every day, but I've never been in it. So I don't know what the real condition is, but I may not be the only one that doesn't know what the real condition is. Yeah, those that's that could be significant or maybe not, but we need yeah. to know up front. I agree. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mark? Uh, no questions. Angela? I have a couple of questions. Okay, good. <clears throat> one of the problems we have is that that building is old and it's broken in many ways, mm -hmm. and it wasn't designed not to be used by people now. So we have to understand how much it's going to cost us to keep it going for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And what, what should we be fixing it? Do we, should we change the kitchen around? Should we do this? Or do we just stop all that stuff and figure out what target we want and then start doing it that way? Because right now, all we have is, let's say, 45 rooms that people can go into. Where mm -hmm. are we going to put other people? This is a big gym. There's another big room. But there's, there's no, no rooms. The kitchen would have to be redone. Mm -hmm. And who, who wants to do that? So my, my question is, before we spend money either fixing the building or hiring 15 people, to do various things with guessing at the building. Why don't we stop all that stuff and get a group of people together, hire somebody who can lead it or whatever, and lay out a, a plan. We don't have a plan. We've been, we've been screwing around for the last 10 years with stuff. And, and I don't think it's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's what I'd, I'd love to see it work. I'd love to see things there 
Yeah. But I don't think it has a prayer because we don't even know what we're doing. At one point, I thought there was like $400,000 for the next year or two that we were going to spend for. It, the revolving fund, you mean? or No, fund that we're, I don't remember then where they were. The, the, the roof. I can speak to the capital when I, when I get my. I okay. Get, I got some details on that. But, but, but that's my problem. I think it's, it's what, what you want to do is very good. Uh, and I agree, agree with that, but it's got to be done as now. Yeah. Well, it does surprise me a little in six years <coughs> from the time that they all recognized it had potential and, and wanted to at least look at nonprofit organizations. And I mean, it is not a simple thing to put together a strategic plan. And it's not simple to put a business plan together. To really run it as a business, and the nonprofits can do that, and get a lot of money coming in to support that activity. I think the Cape Cod Cultural Center has about six people. They have a facilities guy, and they have a uh, an accounting person, and they, they've got they've got a company, a small business. It is a corporation, nonprofit corporation, and they survive on on donations. We can't do that. You can't. The town can't go out and beg for money. Really, I mean, they can they can get a grant now and then to do certain things, but you, how many raffles can we run to to run that place? You really need to, you need a plan of what you want to do, and it isn't there. This is a start. I'm hoping it's enough. Well, the, the Yarmouth uh, one uh, is also done by not the town, and it generates funds and does a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So is that the first thing our person does is a, a say, we've got to change the way we're doing it? A and you think that you think the town is going to want to do it? The other thing is the yeah. people from Yarmouth are not particularly, who know something about that business, looks at the building there and doesn't see a lot of value in the way it's set up. It, it's, it's not valuable the way the rooms are. Right. It's not valuable the way it has to be set up. The, there is a group in, in town who for 10 years has said, stop it and, and get rid of it. It's not valuable. A and I think you might find that out after you. Right. It's possible. I guess I'm still looking at a positive reuse, but. Oh, well, I understand that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I know that that is down. That's that's the default situation at some point. If you if we try other th other things, but I just think this is, I'm kind of on the side that this has got a higher probability of compl of being a success, if there is a good plan and somebody's pushing it, and I don't know if it's uh, a new cultural affairs director or just the community or somebody with money and vision. I don't know, but um, it could go together with the new position. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All set, Angela. Dale. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, thank you. I watched it last week in the uh, board <laughs> of selectmen meeting. And, Thanks. Um, I live just around the corner from the cultural center. Mm -hmm. and I played pickleball there many times. Good. I drive by it several times a week, and I just wonder what is going on in there. I know that they rent rooms. I know that they play pickleball, but I don't see anything of value come out of there for the community. Yeah. Uh, as I drove by tonight on my way to this meeting, there was a sign outside that said, studios for rent, or, you know, apply within. Mm -hmm. um, so as you describe it as a, you know, like a room to rent kind of place, that That's the primary function of it right now, is rental rooms. Um, from my understanding, now I've not been in it, I can't speak to the condition of it, but from the numbers, the revenues and the expenses. I know that it's being maintained. It's being closely watched for the for the uh, serious areas of heating, water. Um, you know, it's gas heat. So I mean, it's 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 going to cost more this year than it did last year, and electricity is going to cost more. Um, right. We have no idea what the condition of the building. We no. Just don't, I don't know what it's going to take. To it has to be fixed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every every yeah. boiler has to be done. Yeah, every roof has to be yeah, done. Yeah, there's some, there's some major, major improvements, yeah. yeah. And also, I believe so there are a number of things 
that are not legal anymore the way they were built. Well, that's, that's another concern is if we, if we start to touch it, do we open up a can of worms where we have to fix it? It's already a can of worms. <laughs> what? So um, I, I have a two-part question. One is, um, is there a history of um, other nonprofits coming along to kind of take this under its wing and, and develop it as a cultural center for the town, or would we need to start our own nonprofit? I was hoping one of two ways on that. I was hoping somebody like a Falmouth or somewhere like that would say, gee, we, or Katuit's got one, uh, even off Cape, would look at this as a satellite or as a, a an accessory location where they could take their performances from one place and go to the other, and they'd be really interested in the fact that 50% of the costs are already covered in the rents, and it's a nice location, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. That could be a. It could be something if there's some <coughs> marketing that could be done in the background to see what what interest it might have. Um, I was kind of hoping that it would be some of the existing nonprofits, the Artist Guild of Howitch and Howitch Fort. Uh, Chamber of Commerce is a nonprofit organization. Um, Anyone can start one. It's that's the simplest part. Is the legality of starting a nonprofit is simple. It's what are you going to do with it once you got it going? And you need some planning, and you need you need the doors open to get in and talk to people in the town about it. And uh, it could be a one or two year trial with a nonprofit. Just lease it to them for a year. But to your earlier point, if you don't start a trial or an initiative of any kind, knowing what your end state needs to be. Yeah. Then you're just wandering. Right, right. You're just waffling. Yeah. I use the analysis of uh, calling for a, an Uber driver, but uh, you don't know where you're going yet. <laughs> and, and the second part of my question is: Does does do you envision that the uh, assessment would include some kind of evaluation of the condition of the building? At least the major capital improvements, because it would have to come up with a plan of five to eight year or some term that a. All of this, by the way, can be modified in a statement of work that eventually goes out for RFP if it's approved. So the, the weighting of it, one task versus the other, the wording, is it strategic? You know, there's, there can be changes, but this is the thrust of what the petition wants to do. But I would expect that, um, that they would be capable of a one or two day visit to look it over with facility manager from the town. Mm -hmm. There you go with the cooperation and direction of the town to facilitate this activity. And and uh, I don't know if the users know so much about it. They're going to complain because the heat the heat isn't up or the Wi-Fi doesn't work because there is none, those kind of things. Yeah. But um, yeah, I would expect they would do a, a, a reasonable assessment, if not quoting a price, at least identifying what they see as a shortcoming and a need. Everybody's going to have difficulty coming up with a price these days. That's what I was referring to earlier. It ha the only way it'll be successful is they have to have cooperation in the depar departments that we have. I mean, why spend money to do an external assessment of the bu right. of the actual building when we have a DPW the department that, that, that can come well, and sure. they have yeah. you know, the skills. Yeah, they've, they've been behind the walls and opened the pipes. They know more about it than anybody else would right now. So thank you. I, I think this is a very important initiative. It could be. It has, it has some, some opportunity to become a good idea. Wasting a lot of money. <laughs> There's one other thing I'd like to add about the nonprofit. Um, if they're making capital improvements, the nonprofit, and they're asking for donations from their donors, they need a term of time ownership or lease to make it payback, make the payback. If you're only leasing it for a one or two years or a trial, they're not going to be able to do any capital improvements because they won't be able to convince the donors that they'll get their money's worth out of their donation. So it is important to assess the time frame of a, of a lease or if it's an outright sale, it's not a lease any longer, that's fine. But I have a feeling this town would like to lease it um, and it's got to be long enough to make it worthwhile for the for the uh, nonprofit to get to get the donors to open their wallets. Okay, uh, yeah, Bill, fine. Fine. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Richard, for coming in and speaking to us. Thank you.
This has been a very uh, important topic for me. On the, on the, I've been on this board six years, and I think I've been asking this question for three or four years for a plan for this building. Uh, as recently as November of last year, when I had to give an annual report to the selectmen on the status of the finance committee, uh, this is one of my major topics, was the cultural center, that we needed a plan, and part of that plan is uh, a capital plan. Uh, the building is, and I've since, since the, the November meeting, that's when stuff started generating on uh, this position for a cultural center director, which I, which I took as a positive step forward on towards a plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'll speak to that later. But uh, just to give a little history on the, on the building, the building was built, uh, the main brick piece facade that we see out there was built in 1937. Uh, the to and the second portion of the building was built in 1990. And when you say 1990, it sounds like it was just yesterday, but it's not yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> 1990 was, you know, 32 years ago, which it, 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 it's, I just had to, I just thought, I think 1990 was just last week. No, it's not, it's 32 <laughs> years ago. And obviously, at 32 years, capital stuff is failing at 32 years. Uh, but a building in 1937, it, things are really failing at, thir at that age. Mm. And the building is 78,000 square feet. That's, okay. that's the number I've heard uh, spoken most often. And uh, capital has been the main driving point of, of my discussion with the selectmen and, and folks, uh, because it is an old building. And I did send the selectmen a, a rather in-depth list of uh, capital questions that I had, over 21 items on there. I'm not going to read all 21 of them. A lot of them have been cited here already. You know, the boilers, the windows, the doors, the roof, the internet, no air conditioning. Uh, you know, the opening of the can of worms. This building was built in 1937. ADA wasn't even in existence in 1937. There's only one entrance into that building that's handicapped accessible. Uh, and I'm sure if, once you start building stuff, you have to go up to modern codes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an elevator in there, only one elevator for that building. Uh, the plumbing of that building, some portions, 1937. Uh, they, it has two boilers in that building. One has failed completely and is not reusable. There's only one existing boiler in that room. Uh, the, the security system, the fire system, access control systems, if there's plan use in the auditorium, uh, the staging has uh, no adequate lighting or audio visual stuff for a production, musical productions. I think that was talked about as one use of that building. Mm -hmm. uh, the kitchen, the kitchen hasn't been used in over six, seven years, and a lot of the equipment was original from 1990, and then some equipment was donated from the tech school when they closed down. Uh, I'm no kitchen expert, but I bought a pizza the other night, and I saw a mixer, mixer at the pizza, pizza store, the same mixer that I've seen in the, in the uh, cultural center. And I asked the guy at the pizza, the owns the pizza store, how much does that mixer cost? And he looked at me funny, and he said, what do you want to know that for? And I said, I'm just curious. He says, $38,000 for that one mixer. Now, it was a commercial grade mixer. He makes a lot of pizza dough, obviously. So I'm just, the, the fact is, a, a kitchen, uh, you know, uh, an incubator kitchen equipment, I've heard that the, uh, the walking, two walking coolers there don't work. So capital, to me, is a very important piece mm -hmm. of, of the equation. Mm -hmm. uh, as you mentioned, there's been two studies been done over the six, seven years. Uh, one actually produced uh, four non-binding resolutions that went to the town. Uh, the major uh, resolution that received the most votes was the uh, affordable housing unit of close to 42% of the votes received. Mm -hmm. The second one, most important one, that got 25% of the vote, votes, was to, as you said, lease it, lease it to a, or, or sell it to a non-profit entity who would then be in charge of all capital costs and all operational costs. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I agree, you have to do it for a predetermined number of years, at least probably 10 years minimum, you know, mm -hmm. to, to make it feasible for any nonprofit to come in there and, and look at that. Uh, uh, on the nonprofit end of it, I did uh, go over and I spent uh, a couple hours with uh, Molly, and I, 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 she has a long name about... Just Molly D. Molly D, yeah, it's about 30 characters long, and I have a, a tough time with five-character last names. So uh, Molly D, she's very receptive to me. Uh, I believe you spoke to her also. And yes, I have. Very helpful on me on, on, on uh, nonprofit cultural centers. Yeah. 
that building is like a miniature of our cultural center. It, it, uh, but that building is roughly, and it has been stated by folks, it's about one-tenth the size of our building. Mm. And that building, as you alluded to with, with costs, uh, it is a nonprofit. I pulled their 990, which is their tax exempt status uh, report, and I looked through it. And uh, their current expenses for that building, everything that they spend on, you know, wages, salary, promotions, expenses to run the programs, it's costing them uh, one, $1,015,000 to, to for the expenses for that year for a building that's one tenth the size. Mm -hmm. uh, their revenues, uh, is one million one hundred and ten thousand dollars, so they're they're a very functional nonprofit as as an entity for for cultural centers, and I think they've been at it now about ten years. I'm not yeah. quite sure there. Yeah. So uh, the the cost to run a building at seventy eight thousand is 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 in the millions, and uh, uh, so that addresses the the nonprofit status piece of of the thing. Uh, the if I can interrupt just one sure. second, the um, similar conversation with Molly, um, she suggested that, uh, and I think I said it in the speech, but I want to reemphasize it, there, there, there's never been a year there that they haven't had more revenue than their expenses. They're fully booked for this year. That's, they've got all their performances scheduled coming. I mean, they've got a staff of six people or more. And you, I think you've got the payroll there. It's over three hundred thousand dollars. They know what they're doing. They've got a plan. Yeah. I don't think she was there when it was initiated. I don't think she had anything to do with the strategic plan. She came from Tampa, uh, but she knows what she's talking about. She ran a three hundred thousand square foot cultural center in Tampa, Florida. Wow. So it can be done, small or big. I mean, yes. it's just what you. It's what your vision is, and that's that was my source when I said it has to be somebody who wants to do something and sticks to it and eventually attracts other people with similar interests to join him or her. If not, there's no, there's no, there's no instigator to get this thing going. John? Yeah. Comment? What you just said, the have a good plan and stick to it. Yeah. Creating momentum having someone pushing it constantly. Yeah. We used to we used to refer to the Big Mo in, in my previous life and implement it from some major statewide projects. And we did it because of every day people would assess where they're at, what needs to be done, yeah. where we're gonna be next week. Right. Just constant pushing slash creating momentum. Yeah. And we don't do that very good in in, in government. No, kind of had to do it in a 37 hour work week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well so just, can I just say one quick thing? Uh, sure. If I'm a voter, is this an either or proposition? In other words, if I'm at the town meeting, do I vote for the cultural director and then vote against the consultant or vice versa? Or would they, is, is it that type of proposition? Well, since this petition is just one above the Herring Fisheries article. <laughs> I think we're going to be at the end of this warrant, um, but I know what your question is. Um, I, I'm, I've had conversations with one or two members of the board, and I thought this would be a good compliment to what they want to do. So you have saying to get. But I didn't get that reaction when they voted, so I'm not sure. I think they're looking at it as a waste of time, a waste of money, and they could come up with this plan by the end of this meeting. That's what was told to me. And I, and I, I think that's crazy. It really is crazy. Because he doesn't understand what I'm driving at. I wish he could sit down with Molly or someone else. And maybe he has, I don't know, or she has. Because I'm, I'm not going to say which, which selectman it was. But yeah, I, I don't see that they should be conflicting. It's clearly possible that either one could get shot down if they go with a separate article for the full-time position. Um, or even if they don't go with a full-time position, there could be an amendment to some other article which removes that full-time person. You never know. But um, I, I hope it works out that it's complementary and they see the value of doing both. 
And uh, to follow up on that, Mark and, and Richard, uh, last night in the selectmen's meeting that we were at, uh, you were going over the warrants, voting on the selectmen were voting on the warrants, we were there to listen. And uh, we're on the fourth draft of warrants right now. Three previous drafts of warrants had uh, two line items in there, one for a director of the cultural center, uh, a separate warrant article, and a, a housing advocate, uh, separate warrant article to fund that position. This draft warrant last night did not have those in there. Uh, I mentioned and asked the, the selectmen if they would consider putting that, those two warrants back into it. Yeah. And uh, it was at the very end of about almost a four hour meeting last night. Uh, there was some discussion on it and, and Michael's gonna bring it up at the next selectmen's meeting. Uh, and uh, so I hope they do put them back in. It would be my desire to see them back in. I think that would uh, clear up a lot of ambiguity in, in, in this, but like Richard said, things can always be amended on town floor. But I too look at this as complimentary, and I don't think there's anyone up here that's against the cultural center, and, and that's the wrong uh, take that some people have had on, uh, on, on when I bring in this topic up. And uh, I want this thing to succeed. I think it's a tremendous building. It's got a lot of potential, but it's also got tremendous costs associated with it which we do not even understand what those costs are right now. You know, some of them, mm. that we've been doing this, this trial run for six years, but none of those trial runs have uh, uh, addressed any of the capital plans whatsoever, whatsoever. And, uh, and that's all I've been asking for for <coughs> months, for years, is a capital plan. <coughs> and haven't received it yet. Uh, I, I like the idea of a possible business school getting involved. I was going to suggest that. My daughter went to Babson, which is a That's very what I was entrepreneurial thinking. My, my daughter school. went to Babson, too. And, uh, uh, and I know they, they, these students pick these things up as, as, as projects. Yeah. And, and they have a whole management, a whole management co course, graduate program in entrepreneurism. And this is right. what the entrepreneur is here. It's right. And there's been stated that we do have a plan for this building in meetings. I have not seen the plan. The only plan that I've come close to seeing is a job description. And if I was a bank, and we are the bank, that's called the, called the Bank of South uh, Harwich, you know, town meeting is the bank. And folks are coming for us, to ask, uh, asking for money. Mm -hmm. And if they were presented a job description as a strategic business plan, I don't think they'd have much success in getting a loan to build out their business. Uh, so I think, feel we do need some type of uh, business plan, strategic plan, mm -hmm. uh, in, involved in it. Uh, I think possibly uh, a committee could be formed of citizens' input mm -hmm. to get together and uh, sketch out what they'd like to do before they have hire a consultant to come mm -hmm. in and then work with that consultant. Mm -hmm. uh, there are companies out there uh, that do this professionally around the country. And I've spoken with them. There's a company called Art Space. Uh, they've developed 54 of these projects around the country, mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of thousands of square foot. And they've even tied in artists and residents and affordable housing within these, w within these buildings. Mm -hmm. I'm not advocating affordable housing here, but it has been done and it's been proven that they can do both. Mm -hmm. uh, for, again, affordable housing was the number one desire when it was a non-binding uh, resolution to put before the town. And that's about all I have to say. Uh, if anyone else has uh, anything to say, I'll uh, close the discussion. And I, I, since you've been here, uh, we could move our agenda around a bit. Our next agenda is to go through the Warren articles. I think as a courtesy to you, we could address your article right now. Fine. Instead at the very end, <laughs> your article yeah, right. is at the very end. And that'll be on a Wednesday yeah. night I at know, 10 o'clock. I know you put in a lot of time. I know uh, you represent a group of folks in town that are serious about that, and they put in a lot of time. Yeah. Uh, and I think it should be heard on town floor. And, uh, and we'll see what, the, what our recommendation of the board is. Okay. And that's the beauty of this, this uh, town meeting. We all have one vote in this town. No one has any more voting power than anyone else. We all have one vote. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, uh, Dale, if you could sure. make a motion. I move that we accept and adopt the citizen position to study best use options for former Harwich Middle School, including recommendations for final financial self-sufficiency. 
Second. Uh, in hearing that, uh, I just want to address that one that important word, self-sufficiency, right there, Dale. That's, I uh, had it on my notes, but you just, you just triggered it. Uh, I'm going to read uh, from the annual report, 2016, uh, what are the, one of the four non-binding questions, word for word. It's, it's just the fourth one that, that received 25% of the vote. And it says, do you favor the retention of the Harwich Middle School building to be leased or sold as, as, as is for the purpose of self-sustaining private organization, cultural or a community center or educational use, incurring all operation, I'm adding this, that was the word for word of the referendum. And another uh, word for word was, uh, in, the, in the explanation was, all expenses and capital would be uh, borne by this entity. So uh, it, it's been talked about. Mm -hmm. I've heard some talk that it's never been talked about as being self-sustaining, but it has been talked about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's been motions been made. It's been seconded. Uh, I'd like to take a vote. Uh, Mark. Aye. Dan. Aye. Karen. Aye. Uh, Mark. Aye. Angelo. No. No. Uh, Dale. Aye. And I'm an aye. Passes six to six. Thank to you one. very much. Thank you, Richard, for coming in here and educating. And if anyone, I'm sorry, B on the on the screen there. Do you have anything to say? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. And thank you for your time, all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Good to see you, Mark. Yeah, good to see you. Okay. Go get some of these papers off. Okay, uh, everybody has a copy of, of the warrants. Uh, from, and the, the warrant that we want to go through tonight is, is the latest one. It's, like I said, the fourth uh, draft. And I've written on my draft uh, the March 25th one. It's the one the selectmen talked to, to the last night. Uh, and, uh, and then Karen has put together a very detailed, comprehensive scorecard or spreadsheet here that, uh, that we're going to use to go through these articles tonight. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it's the date, uh, even across the top, is, uh, you know, the, the, the date the selectmen approved it, uh, we've approved it, money's involved. Uh, an important uh, thing that we have to do and the selectmen also do, we have to record each and every individual vote by person. And then there's some notes off to the right-hand side there. Uh, Mark Keller was there last night and Karen was there and I was there at the selectmen's meeting. I've heard, have heard from some folks that they've reviewed and seen the meeting last night or, 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 or looked at it online today, more or less. And uh, so uh, with that, I'll just go right down through the, through the warrants, Dale. And if you want to uh, start by uh, making a motion, uh, you can see which ones we've voted on. The ones that are in yellow on the spreadsheet. Oh, I don't have a yellow uh, spreadsheet. Thank you. Uh, the ones in yellow is we have no uh, information on it. There was some information missing or dollar amounts missing. Uh, so the selectmen have not voted on those. Uh, all the other ones the selectmen have voted on, and I'd like to do that because we have until uh, Friday to get all our recommendations on every single one of these articles to the selectmen. And I think we can move fairly quickly through these. We are meeting uh, Thursday night, same time, 6 o'clock in this room. Hopefully we'll have uh, numbers for the town operating budget and other numbers here. The town operating budget, of course, is a very important one. Uh, if we don't, we can't obviously vote for it, and we'll have to put in, you know, no recommendations pending further information. And that would meet our statutory requirement for getting recommendations and then we have the month of April uh, to reconcile some of those uh, no recommendations pending further information. We don't, we're not, I don't anticipate a lot of those, so I don't, mm -hmm. in, in definitely don't anticipate being twice a week in the month of April. Yeah. Not at all. I mean, Thank uh, you. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, plus every night it's meeting selectmen's meetings. It's, it's been a long, a long, uh, long month. A long, long month. And then, other extenuating circumstances too, it made it even longer. 
So, Dale, uh, the, just for your reference, the first column is the page in the warrant. Yes. So that'll help you. That's great. <coughs> to yeah, one that yeah, I had a hard time last week, so it's yeah. easier that way. Thank you for putting that in. Yeah, we, we, we couldn't figure out a numbering <coughs> scheme, and then we, we came up with the page number. That was a good idea. It, so. it's, this is the first year they haven't put a uh, number on the article. It's, it, I think that'll, well, that has to well, be it, the that will, it, Like I say, this is the fourth draft. Oh, draft. Mm -hmm within about four weeks. So and it, and it's, it's all working. So let's, uh, <coughs> let's get down through here. Uh, I will skip the town budget because there's no numbers there. So uh, starting with so page 12? Page 12, yeah. right. I move that we accept and adopt the item to amend the agreement between the towns of Chatham and Harwich with respect to the formation of a regional school district. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, We'll have discussion on it, but uh, I, I forgot to mention too, but the schools were in here last night, Montemoy, and they discussed uh, this agreement, and uh, when I get to my turn to speak, I can speak to it more, but uh, uh, the selectmen voted both of these and the budget, uh, you can see five to zero, so they were all in favor. There was discussion on it. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe I'll just do it right now. The, uh, this particular item is the, the new agreement uh, with the schools, uh, where Harwich wants to retain their elementary school, and Chatham will retain their elementary school. Each town will be responsible for the capital cost for that school and the operational cost for that school. Uh, I believe the, the, Chat the Chatham selectmen have approved the agreement. Harwich selectmen have approved the agreement. The school committee has approved the agreement. And, and now we're going to uh, uh, town meeting for each of the towns to approve it. Harwich, I, I think it'll probably be approved because we'll actually be saving about seven hundred thousand dollars by approving it. Chatham is, is they'll be paying more in Chatham. Uh, so, uh, is anyone? There's been is, motions is, been made and seconded. Is Any that a, is that a, is that a one-time savings or is that an annual savings? It'll be an, it'll, it'll be an annual savings, yeah, because at that point, that new agreement, all expenses for the elementary school will be, will be borne by Chatham or Harwich. Right now, Harwich pays for 75% for the operational and capital costs for the, for the Chatham School. So it, it would be a tremendous savings. And that's where the 700000 comes from. <coughs> and uh, uh, any, any discussion? Uh, nope. Mark? Dan? No. Nope. Aaron? No. Mark? No. Nope. Angelo? Dale? Okay, hearing no discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Mark? Aye. 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 And I'm an aye. So that's a seven. Okay. And Karen's going to update this thing, and, and, and knowing Karen, she'll go home and I'll have it by the time yeah, I get home. Real time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is tremendous, because we've been passing this on to uh, Joe Powers, the town administrator, uh, for his staff, and, uh, and then the selectmen showed an interest last night, so I passed it on to them. And I will pass this the updated one on to them tomorrow also. Uh, next one, Dale, is the I move 13? Yeah, okay. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the Montemoy Regional School District budget in the amount of $28,041,205. Do I get a second? Second. Second. Okay. second. Uh, the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, you hearing any discussion on this? Uh, there's no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. 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 No objection. It passes seven to zero. Next one uh, is page fifteen. Page fifteen. Yep. H E A. Yes, H E A. Thank you. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the fund negotiated contract for the Harwich Employee Association in the amount of $139,776. A second? Uh, wait a minute. Oh, excuse me. Okay, okay, okay. The motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Hearing no discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? Aye. Aye. Seven Aye. to zero. Next one. Okay. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the fund negotiated contract for the Highways and Maintenance Employee Association in the amount of $48,880. Okay. 
Is there a second? Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes seven to zero. Next one. Uh, the cap uh, cap well, we did have a capital thing, yes. Yeah. Yep. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the adoption of the capital budget in the amount of three million two hundred and eighty one thousand two hundred and ninety eight dollars. Second. Motion's been made and seconded on the capital plan. Uh, any discussion? No. And uh, uh, and I'm awaiting a, a formal piece of paper from uh, from uh, the town administrator on this. But this is the number that he agreed to. That's in the capital plan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes seven to zero. Next one. Uh, can we vote on the lease purchase agreements without yeah. a dollar yeah. amount? Yeah, there's no yeah. dollar amount. Oh, okay. Uh, I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the lease purchase agreements. Second. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded. Any, uh, I guess this is an annual thing with lease agreements uh, for, uh, for the town. Uh, any uh, discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? There's none opposed. Seven to zero. Next one. This, uh, we'll skip this one. They're waiting for final numbers on that one. Community center? Yep. And the next, uh, page 18, has been scratched off. Uh, next one is the green community. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the community center green community utilities in the amount of $298,540. Second. Okay. Uh, motion's been made and seconded on the community center green community uh, uh, equipment. Uh, this total uh, cost on, on this is, I think, $475,000, uh, of which the town, by participating in a green community program, we get a grant of close to 300,000. Uh, no, excuse me, of 160,000. Yeah, 160,000. So this is the actual town's cost. So, and, and this is uh, air handlers, uh, chillers uh, for, for, for the building. And, uh, no, any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? No, uh, passes 7 0. Next one. Storm water. Oh, storm water. Yep, sorry. Um, I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the stormwater EPA MS4 compliance in the amount of $100,000. Second. Motion's been made and seconded, and this is an estimate uh, uh, cost, too. Some are fixed firm cost, Dale. If you see estimate, you can just say yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? No. no. No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Pass 7 0. Next one, Dan. Yeah. Dale. Um, 21. Bulletproof. Yep. Um, I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the replacement of bullet resistant vests in the amount of. $49,200. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? No. No. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Pass the 7 to 0. Next one. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the dispatch center battery backup uninterrupted power supply battery replacement. That's a mouthful. That's a mouthful. <laughs> In the amount of uh, Fourteen thousand one hundred and thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? The only point is Joe, Joe's going to uh, round up to fourteen thousand one fifty, but just so you know. Okay. And Larry's going to pay for that. Yeah, right. Fifty cents. Uh, <laughs> any, hearing no discussion. Any? Uh, like to do a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? <coughs> Seven to zero. Next one. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to new voting tabulator equipment. No, we did that one. Already. Yeah, we no. Did that. Oh, we did. We yeah. Did that last week. Oh, excuse me. You're right. Yeah. Yep. Good there. Okay. Um, oh, also, we should be. Excuse me. One second, Dale. Uh, mm -hmm. From from going forward, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll state uh, how this is uh, article is being funded. 
I admitted that. The majority articles that we've already voted on have been uh, funded with free, free cash. Uh, okay, so that's, and we'll put that in the next, going forward, but the, all the pre previous articles were all being funded with uh, free cash. Okay. Except the water department's three, th uh, oh, never mind, never mind. That's coming from yeah, retained good. earnings, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, but. Okay, so I, I, uh, I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the water department fiscal year 2023 water main design with an estimated cost of $300,000 funded by retained earnings. Do you have a second? Second. A motion made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Pass the seven to zero. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the purchase and equip vehicles for the police department in Second. the amount of $157,000 sourced from free cash. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Pass the seven to zero. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to fiscal year 2023 vehicle replacement for the water department in the amount of $90,000 and the funding source is water department retained earnings. Do you have a second? Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes seven to zero. We'll so skip, this we're one. Skip the, the deficit on the snow and ice. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Oh, we can do it. Okay, okay. Because it's pending some invoices, I believe. Yeah, they. Oh, that's right. Yeah. This was discussed and approved last night by the accepted by the board of selectmen. There's an estimate in here of four hundred thousand, which is on the high end. It's probably going to be close to a three hundred, and we should uh, get that finalized by the finance director this week, hopefully. So it's going to be less than this anyway. Just waiting for all the bills to settle. Okay, so this is a ceiling. Yes. Okay. And with gas prices, it might be a, a good source of <laughs> gas prices. <laughs> right. so I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the fund and snow and ice deficit in the amount of the estimated amount of four hundred thousand dollars. The funding source is free cash. Second. Second. Okay, motions are made and seconded. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Okay. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to funding of the fiscal year 2023 road maintenance program, the estimated amount of $700,000, and the funding source is a debt override. Do you get a second? Second. Okay, motions are made and seconded. A uh, little explanation on this one. This is an annual uh, uh, warrant article that goes in there. The town's portion of this is 700000 And then in Chapter 90, highway funds from the state, uh, we get a uh, dollar for dollar match. So we'll get $1,400,000 uh, for road maintenance. But this is a debt override. Uh, this does have to go to a ballot. Uh, I'm not sure what the ballot is this year, uh, time, May 15th. It's usually a week or two after town meeting. Uh, and if it's approved there, then, uh, then, it, then that's, it goes forward. But it is a debt override. So that's, that's important because that uh, will in affect your tax rate. Uh, motions been made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes uh, <coughs> 7 <to> 0. <coughs> Next one, or uh, next one, we've gone through them all pretty much, right? How about uh, the um, part time housing through. coordinator? Yeah, we should go back to that one. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. we, we, held, we held that one. Okay. Uh, that's uh, 27. Yeah, page 27. Yep, 27. Yeah. Preservation, right? Yep, yep. Uh, I guess we have to uh, make a motion for reconsideration of this article. I move that we reconsider the article related to the Community Preservation Act. For a part time housing coordinator in the amount of $50,000. Do I get a second? Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor of reconsidering this article? 
Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes seven to zero. Okay, Dale, if you want to read a new motion. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the Community Pre Preservation Act part-time housing coordinator in the amount of $50,000. Can I get a second? Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. And this is one of those articles similar to uh, uh, the Cultural Center director here. Uh, it was voted twice in a, uh, last night by the selectmen. One, once, one to cover it in the operational budget under the town administrator for a full-time uh, housing uh, coordinator. And then they also voted for this part-time one. Uh, I'm not quite sure how it, they, they work it out, but it, it will be worked out on town floor. And this would be uh, similar uh, to the uh, to the cultural director if if the selectmen do put those two warrants that we talked about back on the warrant plan. So if I may, John, yep. this one is this is the part time one that yeah. is usually funded by the CPC. Correct. I think. Yeah. And what John said is they met that group met. Yeah. The night before last night, or whenever it was, or that day, um, yesterday day, and they. The question we had outstanding and the reason we didn't vote on it last week was because we thought we weren't sure if they were going to keep both. If the full time yeah. got approved, were they going to also keep this? That was our question. Yeah. And yesterday or last night, Don said that they will not need this position if the full time housing coordinator position is approved. Okay. So that's the difference from last week to this week. Okay. But again, it'll be worked out on town floor. Yeah, it'll be worked yeah. out on town floor, but he said that the committee anyway said that unlikely they'd need the part-time sure. on top of a full-time. Yeah, this is plan B if the other yeah. one gets shut exactly. down. Exactly. Because that's what it was, that's how it was proposed in those three draft wars before with those full-time positions that had to be approved. Right. Down, down. Mm -hmm. Okay, all those in favor, any, any more discussion? All those in favor of uh, this article? Aye. 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 Pass the seven. Any, oh, stain. 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 We got stain. the Mr. Stain down there. That's right. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, and uh, so it passes six, six yays, one abstain. Yep. Okay. Uh, so we drop down to the wetlands protection yes. bylaw. Yep. Uh, I, I move that we accept and adopt the placeholder ar article related to the Harwich wetlands protection bylaw. Second. Okay, motion's been seconded uh, and uh, made and seconded for the wetland protection bylaw. It's in your warrant book, there's three or four pages of basically changing setbacks, rules, and regulations that the conservation uh, department uh, had asked for. Mm -hmm. And the selection voted five uh, to no, zero on this. They did not. They yeah. voted 311. Oh, 311, okay. Uh, so, any more discussion on this? Uh, any, all those in favor of the Wetlands Protection Act, please by state aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, passes seven to zero. Mark, do you abstain or just so I get it right? No. He, he's, he's voted for it. Right. Okay, all right, I'm sorry. He, Mark disabstains on the CPC article. Okay. Thank you, Mark, for clarification. Next one, Dan. Uh, I, Dale. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the proposed charter revision to change selectmen to select board. Second. 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 Okay. Motions made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. <coughs> I move that we accept and adopt the placeholder article to amend the code of Harwich General Bylaws, Chapter 8, Department Revolving Funds, Section B-1, Funds Established. Can I get a second? Second. All those in favor? Or, uh, let me just hold on one second. No, this is the one where, where okay. Joe uh, wanted to. Yes, I just wanted to clarify that change. for people that are listening. Uh, this warrant is on our agenda for tonight, so people listening at home uh, can follow along in the booklet. And again, in the booklet, on the articles that we refer to them by page numbers. This uh, was a language change, and you can be see that in the warrant. Uh, before the, the each revolving fund, of which there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen revolving funds. Uh, 
before the department <laughs> head of that department was in charge of the uh, disbursement of those funds. Uh, the change this year is the town administrator or designee uh, is being uh, put in there as uh, authorized to spend the fund. So that's what, uh, what that's about. Any other discussion? Yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Nay. Okay. We've got six yeses and one no. Okay. Next one. Dale? Uh, I move that we accept and adopt the annual department revolving funds authorization. Second. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, this is an annual discussion, too, by the selectmen uh, and us and uh, of the, the, uh, the amount that's in some of these revolving funds, the uh, authorization levels. Uh, some would say they're too, they're too high, some would say too low. But uh, the selectmen did pass this four to one last night. Uh, does anyone I have, have anything to say? Angelo usually no. has something to say about this. But I do. Okay, Dale. Do we know how this uh, relates to last year's spending limit? I think the I, column I, heading says fiscal year 2022 spending yes. limit. Yes, that that, that's, a, that's a mistake. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, good pickup, Dale. Or did you watch the movie this morning? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it should be in the column, it should be fiscal year 2023 is the spending limit. Disposition of fund balance is 22, not 21. Mm. What they did share was that this was, I mean, the auditor, was that last week's auditor? Yeah, yeah. two weeks before. Yeah. Two weeks ago, and they said that these were sort of the, the normal range yeah. for a town. There was no issues with There was no it. issues from an auditor standpoint, just as an FYI. I just, cur out of curiosity, I'm just wondering if there's like revolving fund creep. Well, the, 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 the amount, the ceiling has to be approved every year, and there, there has been creep. Yeah, usually they start off at twenty-five thousand, and they, they they creep up, and that's been the, the discussion of every year. It's going to be looked at, and uh, so I, and I do not have the fund balances available. Any other discussion? Yeah. Okay. Hearing no other discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Nay. Nay. Who said nay? Nay. Nay. Okay. Dale said nay. Okay. I, I don't have enough information. Okay. Uh, what information would you like? Would you like the balances? Yeah, I can get for, balances. For last year? Yeah, I can get the balances, yeah. Okay. okay no problem. Thank you. I think the idea is that this gives the discretion to the department heads, you know, like the rec to go out and buy baseballs and bats sure. for programs, and then yep. they take in money, spend the money, but I, I, will get, I will get the fund balances. I'll try to get them for Thursday. Just for FYI, if we want to reconsider to, I mean, we passed six zero, but uh, uh, I think it's important to, to have these fund balances. Thank you. Uh, next one. Uh, <clears throat> I move that we accept and adopt the article related to adopting Mass General Law Chapter 200A, Section 9A, Disposition of Unclaimed Property. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? No. Uh, no. Pretty, I'm just getting to my book right here. I think this is what Carol said that sometimes checks aren't. Yeah, you know, not, not cashed. Aren't cashed yeah. and, and things like that. Yeah, what she said, without this law, we have to hold these funds. And there's a huge process to deal with them, and it takes t tons of time and effort from the treasurer's office. Right. Okay. Thank you, Karen. So we just want to adopt general language from MGL. Yeah. Okay. Uh, motions been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. Any Aye. nays? Passes seven to zero. Next one. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to adopting Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5. Clause 56, assessment of local taxes, property exemptions. Second. The amount of $10,000. Second. Second. Uh, ten, do, do, what's that? I think it's, is it, that's, uh, that's in the operational subspace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
The motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Passes 7 to 0. Okay. Um, I move that we accept and adopt the article related to adopting Mass General Law Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 5N, Senior Citizen and Veteran Property Tax Work-Off Abatement Programs. Second. In the, I'm sorry. In the uh, to amend that in the amount of thirty thousand dollars. Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. Uh, what this is is that the the assessor's office they have a number of, of programs uh, that taxpayers can uh, apply for and get tax relief, and I think some of them have to be renewed periodically. Uh, and I think that's what the case on these are. Uh, there is full explanation in the warrant a book about this, but it's a, a program available to senior citizens. They can come in and work to help offset their property taxes. Hmm. Uh, uh, the veterans one, this one I believe is if, if you're on active duty uh, out of the country uh, in service for the country, uh, you get uh, tax relief on your property taxes. And uh, the estimate from the tax assessors, uh, people taking advantage of all these programs, and, and the assessors, they, they say they have multiple programs. I think it's probably the most of any town on the Cape of, of different programs available to citizens. The assessors and the chairman of uh, the board of assessors are going to do a tremendous job of this, and they have to petition the state to get this approval from the state. So it's a great program. And, uh, and so the abatements add up to about thirty thousand dollars. Thirty thousand, correct? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a tremendous program. Great. Uh, uh, any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Pass seven to zero. Uh, I move that we accept and adopt uh, the. The uh, next one we probably should hold off on. Yeah, yeah that's the, the yellow one. Note. I was going for the <laughs> fun <laughs> prior <laughs> years. Yeah, this one. Which one? Oh, you skipped that one already. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to funding prior year's unpaid bills in the amount of $5,000 sourced from free cash. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion on this? This is just an annual thing, too. Bills come in past the due date and, or something, and then we have to have a little reserve to pay for this stuff. So, uh, And this funding source is free cash. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay, moving on. Uh, okay, I move that we accept and adopt the article related to promoting the town of Harwich in Second. the amount in the amount of thirty thousand dollars sourced from free cash. Second. Motion to made and seconded. Uh, this one is uh, promote the town of Harwich. This is uh, annual contribution to the Chamber uh, of Commerce, uh, Cindy. Cindy Nelson uh, is the director there. She does a tremendous job. I mean, I've talked to Cindy, uh, Cindy many times, gone in there, and she's, she promotes the town. It's unbelievable. I mean, she's got pamphlets in the market basket over by the bridge on her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I think she's even, if Cindy's watching this, she's, I think she even has promote Harwich at uh, Bass Pro Shop in Foxborough. Nice. <laughs> it's a tremendous. <laughs> Tremend and the different pro it's just, it's a tremendous job. And uh, it was mentioned last night by a couple selectmen, too, that this is an annual uh, contribution, and it's been at or close to this limit. I think it's been 25, 30,000 for a number of years, and the selectmen talked about maybe uh, raising that next year. So uh, any further discussion? No. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Uh, Pass the 7-0. Uh, okay. Um, I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the supplemental annual allocation of Mass Cultural Council for the local cultural council grants in the amount of thirty-six hundred dollars sourced from free cash. Second. The motion's been made and seconded. Any uh, discussion? Uh, brief discussion on this. Even though it says uh, Mass Cultural Council, the local council. Cultural Council grants. 
uh, this is independent of the cultural building there. Uh, they do work hand in hand, but this is a separate entity and it's nothing to do with the building per se, other than, other than they do work. And this is an annual contribution to the town. Any more discussion? Uh, hearing no more discussion, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? 7 0. Okay. <laughs> next, the next five are mm -hmm. private petitions, so some we voted on. But these are all citizens' petitions, as I mentioned earlier. Private citizens come forth with a, a petition uh, to get on the warrant, and, uh, and these are those, those, uh, those uh, articles. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to amending Mass General Law governing the dispersal of school choice funds. Take second. A second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, discussion on this, if you read, have read the packet or, or watched the video, uh, there's a gentleman, uh, Dan Baker, came in, and, uh, and I've, I've talked to Dan. Uh, and uh, this is basically, he's asking for school choice funds to go past uh, what they currently are designated in the state legislative. Right now, if you want to send your child to, uh, to Nauset Regional, you can do that, and a certain amount of money follows that child uh, or student. Uh, or if you want to send your student to uh, a charter school, uh, the money from the school department follows that, that student. In the case of uh, charter school, it's basically what the tuition cost of that school is. So I'm not exactly dollar known on the, on the Lighthouse Charter School, which is the majority of them, but other, they go to other charter schools throughout the Cape. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's close to $20,000. Uh, follows, comes out of the town's school budget and goes and follows that child. This particular petition is asking for two more school choice uh, initiatives. One, if you decide to homeschool your, your student or child at home and that you're certified. I guess there's an organization that certifies homeschoolers. Uh, the cost to do that uh, would come out of the school budget for that child or student. Uh, and, and then it takes it a step further by asking for private school, uh, school choice money to follow that, that student. Mm -hmm. uh, a recommendation, if I believe, from uh, uh, from the legal was that this is really a non-binding resolution, that it has to be a state-approved program, and from what folks say, it, it, it takes years for this to, 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 uh, to come to fruition. Uh, it, so I don't know how uh, people uh, feel on this. Uh, it's, 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 we, what we have to do as a committee is we have to make a, a positive recommendation and right now we have a positive recommendation being made uh, for uh, accept and adopt this article. The selectmen made a positive recommendation of accepted and adopted it last night, they three to two. They split it three to two, yeah. And, and, uh, I, and if, we, if, we, if, there, if there is no majority, which we have to have four votes to make a positive uh, recommendation, then our second thing is we have to, we'll, we'll do uh, or go for a positive motion, which is indefinite postponement, is a positive motion. Uh, my uh, leaning on this, I, I would do what the selectmen do. I would say, let's make a positive motion uh, and then uh, for approval, and then let it wind its way through the, through the thing. I was here that night when uh, Dan Baker came in and, and gave his presentation, and at first, he was, we, were all, we were all hearing private petitions that night, and, uh, and there was a lot of people in the room. I think one of the most attended select meetings I've seen, and, and I wasn't sure what those folks were all here for. I thought they were here for the hunting program, because I had heard that a meeting a couple weeks previous had got a lot of turnout Charles for it. Neck. But they were all here for the school choice. And I was really surprised the number of parents that are choosing to for various reasons, they have their own personal reasons why they want their children at home. But I think, do you remember what the 80, was it 80 families or 80 they were, I'm not sure the number, but they were very compelling yeah. 
speeches, they were. if you will. Yep, good presentation. Yeah, I thought good. those, those people homeschooling did a really great job presenting their case, yeah. in my mind. What I struggle with is, is this lumps um, homeschooling in with private schooling. Yes. And I think those are two very different demographics. Yes. Yeah. Yep, they are. And that was talked about in, 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 in the meeting, that, mm -hmm. those demographics. Mm -hmm. uh, out in the but again, this is, you know, I'm no predictor on state legislation and how it moves, but uh, I, can, I can, this is not going to move too fast in the state legislation <laughs> if I was to place a bet. So what I'd like to do is send a, a positive note to these homeschooling parents. I do, I think, probably would object to the private school aspect of it there. You know, I, I would I would definitely take uh, umbrage with that. But uh, I think the homeschooling people uh, should get a, a positive recommendation, and, and it'll come before town meeting too. Mm -hmm. So, so that's my take on this, Dan. John, my take is that uh, if you agree that this is a could potentially become a policy statement that can be supported by the general populace. I don't support the concept. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to vote no. Okay. So I fully understand that. And the, the concept I have uh, grappling with is it, it takes money from, from the school budget already. And uh, so that's one thing that has to be further discussed and worked out. I, I Yeah, I don't wholeheartedly support this, but I do support the uh, homeschooling aspect of it, you know. And uh, so what, we can just take a vote, see how it goes. If we get a majority, if we don't, then we'll, we'll reconsider and go to an indefinitely postponement. Uh, hearing no more discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Why don't we do a roll call vote on this yeah, one? Uh, Mark? Kelly? Nay. Nay? Dan? Aye. Karen? Aye. I'm an aye. 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 Angela? Nay. Nay. Abstain. Abstain. Ooh, ooh, what do we get oh, there? Aye. Yeah, what did you say? I, so we're three, three, or three. Four, four, two, one. Two. No, it's you three, three, three one. I said nay. And Mark? Yes. Abstained. abstained. Mark abstained. So one, two, three. Oh, oh Mike abstained. Three eyes, three I said nays, nays, and then yeah. abstained. What so did you say three to two. Aye. Three to two to Aye. one. Aye. Okay. So we're three, three, no, one. That doesn't, no, doesn't it's three, three, one. Angela, what did you say? Yeah. We had no. No. Oh, he said no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought I. Yeah. yeah. I, I, that's what I heard. Three, three, no. Three, okay. Three, one. Okay. The motion does not pay, uh, pass. So I'd like to uh, uh, make a make a po positive motion for indefinite postponement for reconsideration first. I move that we reconsider the article to amend Mass General Law governing the dispersals of school choice funds. Second. Second. Okay. A motion has been made and second for reconsideration of, uh, of the article on school choice funds. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That passes seven to zero. Okay. And uh, what is that? Just so I can write it down here correctly, the this vote we just had now is for? Reconsideration. 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 Okay. I have to do three votes on this one uh, to okay. get a positive motion. So now I'm going to move that we indefinitely postpone. Right. I move that we indefinitely postpone the article <laughs> related to amending <laughs> Mass General Law governing the dispersals of school choice funds. Can I get a second? Second. Okay. Motion is made and second for investment indefinitely postponement of the uh, dispersal of school choice funds. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passes seven to zero. Thank you. And it's yeah, this is a it's a tough one here, and uh, mm. I I do support the uh, homeschooling aspect yeah, I of wish it. They came and I think, and yeah. Anyway, enough on that. Mm. Okay, okay, moving on. Uh, hunting. Uh, the Chase Library. So it's hunting now. Yeah. Yep. Those neck. I move that we accept and adopt the article to prohibit hunting in the Bell's Neck Conservation Area. Second. No. Okay. Again, this is very similar uh, to uh, the school choice one. The selectmen voted no to support and accept and adopt and recommended indefinitely postponement. We can do a... Can we get straight to IPP? Yeah. Or, or, or do people want to? 
Oh, oh we've already made the motion. We, the we motion has been made and seconded. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so we have to uh, see where we fall on this. Yes, I think we probably should have did a straw discussion first. But <laughs> uh, so this is very similar to the school choice things. Uh, I did not attend that selectman's meeting, when, but there was a lot of opposition to this for various reasons. Uh, there, there's there's federal lands involved because it's it's a river. Uh, there's state lands. There's citizens' lands, and, uh, and again, this was uh, presented by. Uh, uh, let's uh, get her name correctly here. Uh, Sandra, yeah, uh, Carol Kucha Stone uh, made this presentation. Uh, and did a very compelling reason there. But again, this is a private petition. They have a right to go between town meeting and, and voice their opinion for support on, on town's law. Uh, the motion's been made and seconded to uh, support this article. Uh, I'd like to take a vote on that. All those in favor? Should we talk about it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I feel like what I, I don't think the case that was, at least the one I saw, was, was well presented because it wasn't a lot of evidence of. Um, you mean by, by Carol? By Carol, like okay. there wasn't a lot of evidence, and the police chief was here of incidents over at Bell's Neck being reported to the police department. However, I do understand that there's a ton more recreational activity over there since they've, I mean, it's just beautiful. Oh, but I was there today. Yeah. There's a ton more activity, and I know people who live in the neighborhood who have expressed concern about some things. And so while I understand that and I get it, I think there has to be some kind of valid or documented stuff with the police station to, for me to feel comfortable. Well, so that it. being said, in... Uh, I don't know, the mid-90s, I came home on Halloween day when I lived in Hopkinton, uh, and there was a bullet hole in my front door, and that was that happened about five minutes after my wife and son had just walked through the front door, oh, and it was, you know, about five feet or four and a half feet off the, hmm. off the threshold. Wow. Um, so the police came, investigated, and said, yeah, indeed, that's a, that's a bullet hole. Um, but he said, uh, I said, what can I do about it? He said, well, you can try to put a, uh, an article on the town warrant, but Hopkinton is just full of hunters. And he said, you know, you just have about as much chance as a snowball in July, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a, it's a valid hobby for sure. many people. Yeah. So I think I, right. I don't, I, and I also think there's a case for, because there's so much more recreation in that area, and, but I do think there has to be more to base banning it on. You know what I mean? There's not enough in my mind, evidence to mm. ban that for all those people who right. enjoy doing that. It only takes one. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, any other discussion? No, but, but we've made a, a positive motion to our, uh, on this, so we have to uh, vote on it. And if it doesn't pass, then we have to repeat uh, what we just did for the school choice. All those in favor? Aye. No, oh, you're in favor of it? Yep. Abandoning oh. oh. the, the, the hunting? Yes. Yeah, oh, okay. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I like hunting, but I like hiking better. Okay. Can you, could you do the vote again? Okay. Uh, any other uh, votes on this? Oh, well, there was one yes. Let's go one at a time. Okay, what would you do a roll call? Mark? Nay. Nay. Okay. Nay. Mark? Nay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. John, what are you? Are you? Um, uh, that's a tough one. <laughs> I, I love hunting and I ban hunting, but I think for this particular parcel of land and the use that this parcel of land gets and the caliber of guns, I'm going to vote uh, yes on banning hunting, but it passes. Four to three. Four. It, it, it didn't pass. It yeah. didn't. No, it so did. we have to reconsider. Three, three, one, or? Three, four. Three, four? Yep, okay. So the motion fails. Just said, I just want to get this. Nays was myself, Dan. Um, and me. I wanted Dan Hunt. No, Nays. Yeah. You were Nays. Nays. You were okay. a, you were, yeah, you were an I. To ban hunting, yeah. Okay, yes, it was four against three, four. Yeah, Mark's looking for yeah, Nays. Yeah. 
Yeah, would you go Van Hunt? I invited to, yes. You said yes. To Van Hunt? Dale yes. said yes. And I said yes. Yeah, I said yes, and Karen said yes. No, I said no. Oh, you did? I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, then it's three, four. Eight, four three, four, zero. Yeah, okay. Three, four, zero, the motion fails. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I move to reconsider. Second. second. Okay. The motions are made to recon uh, and, and seconded for reconsideration. Yeah. Or I. Uh, we vote on the reconsideration. Yes. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Pass the seven zero for reconsideration. Okay. Uh, I move that we indefinitely postpone the article to prohibit hunting in the Bell's Neck Conservation Area. I second. Okay. The motions are made and seconded to indefinitely postpone. Uh, Hunting in the Bell's Neck Conservation Area. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass the 7-0. Thank you. Uh, on the next next two, <laughs> we're going to with the two of uh, this, this article, and I'll let Angelo speak to it because he's a little bit older than I am. But this article, <laughs> a little bit, Angelo, I said, you know. So uh, this article, I think the selectman said in the discussion that these articles have been on, and I spoke to Sally Bobano <laughs> on this, on these articles, and I understand uh, where she's coming from, but these articles in some shape, form, or manner have been discussed for over 20 years uh, to dispose of, of, of the, this building here in West Harwich. Uh, so uh, the selectmen both voted no on these articles. We'll take one each at a time, but it voted definitely postponement on articles and I'm suggesting that maybe we do the same, but if we can, uh, I'd entertain a positive motion for uh, uh, for Sally Obano's uh, private petition here. Uh, any, any is it, want to make is a this motion? a current petition by Sally Urbano, yeah, or is this both a 20-year-old? No, they're both by her, yeah. Okay. But she has been, and Angelo, correct me if I'm wrong, has been one of the main forces in preserving these buildings in various forms and shapes of, uh, I personally want to just sell the buildings and get rid of them. Mm -hmm. they're, they're in deplorable shape. They're, they're, there's a, if you go to the building, it's in front of, it's in back of the Baptist Church in, uh, in West Harwich. There's an orange square with an orange X in it. Oh, we talked about this last year. Which, mean, yeah, which means that the building has been condemned. If a fire should break out there and the fire department shows up, they will not go in the building to put it out. And uh, the selectmen, I believe, have some new offers on the table for disposal of the building. I'm not 100% sure on that. But, uh, uh, I have a question. Sure. I, I'm not as old as Angelo, so I wouldn't know this. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I'm sorry. Um, but I, I don't know much about the building. Yeah. It says it's historic, but is it? Like from the people? No. It's old. It's, it's just old. It's old. Okay, got it. And, 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 and the inside of the building is really destroyed. There's no inside. And what the town has been asking for, <coughs> excuse me, is if you buy that building, you have to fit, build it on the outside the way it used to look. I, I've asked about what made it historic, and you really can't get anything except that it's been around for a long time, and it's been there, and a lot of us have gone to school there. Thank you. Mm. It's not on any historical registers, or there's no significant person that went to grade school there or anything. George Washington didn't yeah. sleep there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, if, if no positive motion uh, for accepting the doc, I'll, uh, I'll take a positive motion for a definite postponement. I move that we indefinitely postpone Article related to protecting the historic West Harwich schoolhouse with historic restriction. I second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? That passes 7-0. And uh, Dale, you, same thing on the next one. Uh, looking for a positive motion to, uh, to accept and adopt. And hearing none no. or anything, we'll make a positive motion for uh, definitely postponement. I move that we indefinitely postpone the article related to selling the historic West Harwich Schoolhouse using full provisions of Massachusetts Procurement Law 30B. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? 
passes 7 0. We are already done 46. Uh, with West Harwich School, and that passed 7 to 0. Mm. Did yep. pass 7 to 0? No. Oh. We did a 6 to 1. 6 to 1, okay. Oh. That passed 6 to 1. Uh, that's right, Angela. That's right. Uh, we voted on herring fishers, fisheries. This is Mark uh, Amherst's favorite article. And uh, we'll be presenting it at a town meeting. <laughs> so, uh, next one is 49. The noise one. Yeah. And these. These were mentioned in the warrant as a standalone uh, warrant. I think uh, what these were is it through uh, uh, budget uh, deliberation uh, with Joe and the Selectman and, and Carol. Uh, these were added uh, to the warrant uh, this week, and that's what and they're classified as standalone articles, which means. Uh, they haven't. They're, they're just. They're on the warrant booklet right now, but they will be inserted in their proper place when, <coughs> once Joe comes up with a, a numbering scheme for them. But these these warrants have all been approved uh, to be on the warrant, and the selectmen uh, voted on the majority of them uh, last night. So uh, the next one off of that is uh, 49, Dale. So. <clears throat> I move that we accept and adopt the article related to the amendment of Chapter 189, Noise. Why don't you read the, why don't you read the article in this one? That yeah. There isn't a lot of description in that. To see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 189, Noise of the Town General Bylaws, by deleting 189-1 G3 in its entirety by request of the Board of Selectmen. That doesn't give us a lot of information. Second. I, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, I can, uh, there wasn't a lot of discussion I, uh, when some of the selectmen asked for uh, clarification on this, and they said it would be, uh, if I remember Mark or, or Karen, that they're going to be uh, enforcing this, this new chapter that they want to amend uh, via the liquor licenses. And uh, so I'm thinking that... Uh, that the noise that we that's been a perennial uh, issue in Harwich Port in the summer is is noise, for, and it's always been tied back to liquor, you know, bars, restaurants that sell liquor, and so there must be some enforcement within the liquor licenses that if they make too much noise, their liquor licenses can be uh, mm. impacted somehow, and that was the discussion. Mark, did you have any uh, recollection of more definitive what this is about? No. Karen? I, I don't. I didn't take notes, but that sounds, that makes yeah. sense because we had a lot of discussion about liquor licenses. And yeah, that's, that's, that that's, that's what I think it is. Uh, if I, I'll make a note of it. If it's something different, uh, I'll let the board know. But that, it was somehow the enforcement was tied back to the liquor licenses. Yeah, I seem to recall Mary saying something about that. At the yeah. end of the discussion. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Hearing other no, then any more discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Passes 7 0. Next one. Uh, uh, I move that we accept and adopt the article for the golf feasibility study in the amount of $35,000 funded by the Golf Improvement Fund. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded for a golf feasibility fund. And this is one of those revolving funds that we spoke about earlier. Uh, the golf course, I believe, has two uh, revolving funds. One of them is the Golf Improvement Fund, uh, and it's just set up for this purposes, and it's stated in, in, the, uh, in the revolving fund purposes of what it can be done. So this is, uh, it's funded by the golf, uh, by the golf committee golf co course doesn't come from town finance. Mm -hmm. Looks like they're, they're seeking to build a three-hole practice course for their putting school or something like that. Yep. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 7-0. <coughs> Next one is DPW trucks. Yep. Um, I move that we accept and adopt the article for vehicles for Vehicles DPW in parentheses four for the amount of 
$298,450 will be funded by free cash. Second. 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 Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, this was uh, another article in the book. You can see there's a number of uh, vehicles proposed. Uh, and uh, But what through uh, budget uh, budget discussions, uh, the total, did you read the total, Dale? Yeah, 290, okay. oh, not the, uh, was there? A, yeah, the, the, the total is on the sheet, on the scorecard. Yeah, well, I did, Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. It was originally proposed for 495,000, mm -hmm. but through budget uh, negotiations, it was reduced to 298,450 dollars. And what that gets uh, the town is a Mack tractor uh, for $170,000. I think this is a, a truck, a semi-truck, to haul the, uh, uh, the C&D and garbage to an off-site uh, premise. Uh, $48,450 for a dump truck body to replace a body that's on a dump truck now. And then eighty thousand dollars for a Ford F three fifty pickup truck. So there's three vehicles that are being uh, incorporated within the two hundred ninety eight thousand four hundred fifty dollar budget. Any further discussion? Are you sure it's three vehicles? Yes, three vehicles. Yeah, they dumped the uh, uh, skid steer. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there was other things too, yeah, like they, they, uh, the skid steer and the ball field mold were deferred. Uh, any other discussion on this one? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Passes 7 0. Okay. Okay. I move that we accept and adopt the article related to two fire vehicles, the amount of $130,000 sourced from free cash. Do you get a second? Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded for fire vehicles. This is for uh, two. Uh, Two vehicles. Uh, one would be a uh, SUV or pickup truck, and I think this might be a deputy chief car. I'm not sure, but uh, and the second one would be a pickup truck for $130,000. Any Total. further discussion? This is coming from free cash. I uh, can't tell you. They have the chief was very good at or his team about discussing the current condition of yeah. the other vehicles. Pretty rough, huh? Pretty rough. <laughs> old, really old. And yeah, the town does an excellent job of, uh, that's a good point, Karen, to that point, uh, of maintaining a fleet of many, many vehicles and heavy equipment, tractor trailers, very technical equipment, all in-house. And if you've ever visited up at Link, Cooper's organization up there at the town, at the, at the DPW work, it's just amazing what those folks can do. One time Dan and I took a tour up there and they literally had an engine out of one of the trucks in, in complete pieces, and they were f repairing something and putting it back in. So wow. the, the cost that this saves the town is tremendous. And then they, we, they resurface, I mean, re, re, uh, repurpose vehicles yeah. when, when police cars get too much for, for, the, for, for the police vehicle, they're, they're maintained down through other departments in the town. So by the time this town gets rid of it, a piece of equipment, it's, it needs to be gotten rid of so uh, <laughs> I fully support any uh, vehicles for this town agree uh, uh, all those in favor Aye. 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 all those opposed it passes seven to zero okay next one I move that we accept and adopt the article related to a mini pumper in the amount of twenty two thousand five hundred dollars from free cash second 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 Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Uh, Karen, do you want to give her next? Do you know what the information is on this? I know that that mini pumper costs something just shy of $500,000 yeah. or something. 450. Four fifty. Yeah. And um, they've put in for a grant, and if they get a grant, the remaining amount would be $22,500. That'd be incredible. That'd be awesome. And, and, and uh, th there are some department heads in this town do an excellent job also of, of writing grants. I mean, the harbor master, John Radone, uh, the fire chief, yeah. the police chief, uh, the ones that come to mind immediately because they've all been hundreds of thousands of dollars of grants. Uh, uh, and 
the chief has been very, fire chief has been very successful on, on writing grants, so. I think it's a two-in-one truck or something, like it, it has a, multi-purpose. Yeah, it's a pumper and, and then like a brush truck yeah, or like something cool. like that. it's really going to yeah. be very great for the town. So, so uh, hopefully we'll get the grant. Uh, and if it does, it's 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 already twenty two thousand five hundred. So and it's for, for free cash. Yep. So yep. all those. No, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. That's the mini pumper. We got one left. Yeah, done. No, we did the water structure. Oh, we voted the water structure. Yeah, we okay. did that last oh, week. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, We're waiting on those. We added a placeholder, as you see on sixty six, seven, and eight for the, as John mentioned earlier, the full-time housing advocate and full-time director of cultural affairs until we get more information from the board. Yep. Uh, we, we again talked about it last night in the select group meeting. Uh, briefly, it was after a close to a four-hour meeting, and the select group decided to, uh, they would bring it up in this week's uh, 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 select group meeting. It's at the bottom of the page. Uh, and I, I, it's, I, I had put requested by finance committee. It, it, that's a, 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 mis, a mis, misspeak on my part. It's a, not so much requested by us. I just want to uh, put them in there. The selectmen had it in there for three previous uh, drafts, and it was re, uh, removed from this particular draft. And I yeah. just would particularly like to see it back in there. Yeah. I would help. Yeah, I think it would put help. Put place back on. Yeah, I think it would help. Uh, clear up, uh, especially the cultural center director's uh, position there, because these two positions are in the town administrator's operating budget, and it be, it's very hard, I think, for the average citizen to, to dig that out of that budget. Yeah. It, it'd be very difficult. Uh, but if it's clearly on the warrant as to what these two new full-time positions were, there was some discussion on traditional past annual town meetings where any new full-time uh, position uh, was on the warrant. I have looked at the town charter. It doesn't clearly spell that out in there. It just says the funding source has to be in, in, in the town budget. Mm -hmm. But tradition in, in Harwich has put them on, and I passed on a, a, uh, uh, a warrant article from 2011 to to the town administrator last night stating that what they were looking for a f new full-time position for a building maintenance person so it's uh, precedent has been set for those articles to be in the town warrant and that's all I'm asking that the mm -hmm. you put in there and let the town's right. people see them vote them and vote them independently of, of the being buried in a, a big operational budget that's all I'm asking for these are the uh, selectmen's warrants they aren't our warrants by any stretch of the imagination just like this budget it's the selectmen's budget, and it's not our budget. We're tasked with looking at the budget and making recommendations, as we can see, and then uh, digging into some of the more important ones and give our recommendations to the town, which I think we have done. We've gone through the majority of these budgets. It looks like it's about four that we need more discussion on. I'll get that this week, hopefully by tomorrow uh, or for our Thursday meeting. And, uh, and I would just like to uh, discuss April meetings br briefly. Uh, I don't anticipate. I definitely don't anticipate meeting twice a week, nor maybe even once a week. Uh, but and if we do meet, it'll be very quickly. Uh, I do not anticipate any long deliberations or discussions uh, because we have four that we have to vote on, and or and or if we get more information that's come to light on some of these articles, we may want to reconsider. Because uh, I do like to go to town meeting with as few no recommendations pending further information. I feel it's our due diligence that we owe it to the town, the town citizens, to uh, have full recommendations uh, on all the articles. Uh, and that's what I strive to do as, as chair. So I'll keep you posted. I have reserved Tuesdays and Thursdays for the months of April. And as we get closer, I'll let you know on exact those dates and times, and we can, uh, Meet early too at six o'clock. It's all subject, but uh, I'll know probably more by Thursday where we sit with the budget. Any questions on that? No. Okay. Uh, Hearing no further discussions, I'd entertain a motion for adjournment. I move to Second. adjourn. Second. 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 Motion's been made and seconded. All is adjourned. Aye. 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 All those opposed. Passes seven to zero. And as I mentioned in the past, the meeting is over. Oh.
There'll be no further discussion.